All right, hey everyone, this is Paul C. Tarina, nutritional therapist and Atavis Life Coach out of Las Vegas. We're here at Whole Foods to give you a virtual shopping tour. So this is meant to take the place of an in-person shopping tour. If you can't make those tours, if you live out of town, if you're doing this remote or just can't make some of the uh, tours that we schedule, then we're going to try to give you the information that we cover when we go through the store. So we'll try to make this quick. Um, I want to start out by saying uh, we don't mandate that you shop at Whole Foods. So you don't have to shop at Whole Foods. Some of the principles that we're going to learn as we go through this, you should be able to use at other stores. But we do like Whole Foods for a lot of different reasons. Um, there's a convenience factor. So if you come to Whole Foods, like there's a lot of different things that you can get here in one place. We do have people in our community that will go out and do a little bit of shopping at Costco, a little bit at Whole Foods, do some online shopping, and they have different places they get different things. For me personally, I don't like to spread myself thin like that. I just don't have time for it. So a lot of times coming to Whole Foods is very convenient. It's a one-stop shop. And you're getting a certain level of quality at Whole Foods that you're not going to find at other stores. So at Whole Foods, they have minimal quality standards that we really like that in order to get things into the store, they have to pass these certain minimal quality standards. And I want to cover just a few of those real quick. All right. So first of all, they have a list of what they call unacceptable ingredients. <clears throat> and these unacceptable ingredients, a lot of them fall in line with the things that we're trying to avoid anyway. So there are no artificial sweeteners in Whole Foods and they do their best to kind of keep those things out and they're always scanning ingredients and approving things before they let them into the store. Um, most of the unacceptable or toxic dyes and colors and preservatives are not allowed in the store. So things like FD&C colors, um, um, Oh, and then a high fructose corn syrup and hydrogenated and partially hydrogenated fats are also not allowed in the store. Um, things like uh, MSG and all its different forms, even some of the hidden forms, as they start to learn more about how MSG can be disguised, they try to do their best to keep that out of the store. Um, they don't allow any irradiated foods, and if you're not f familiar with irradiation, irradiation is basically using radiation to radiate produce and other foods to kill pathogens, but then you also have some residual radiation, and so that's something that we're not big fans of. Um, and then also a little bit on labels. So there's not a standard definition for grass-fed, and so when we go through the meat department, uh, places like Whole Foods, um, even though there's not a standard definition for, for grass-fed, because they know what consumers are looking for, when they say grass-fed, it means exactly what we are looking for. Um, and then we'll cover a little bit more nuances about some of the other things in the meat department. Um, the natural label is something to kind of be aware of. Um, when it comes to real food, like meats and produce, like natural is a useful term. When it comes to packaged products, it's not a useful term. So if you see a packaged bag of popcorn or something along those lines, then natural is not really going to uh, have any meaningful use for us. Uh, all right. Also, the organic label is an extremely useful term because organic implies non-GMO, non-synthetic chemical inputs, non-use of human sludge fertilizer, which believe it or not, that means that if it's not organic, then you actually have human sludge fertilizer that's probably used to cultivate the produce. Um, and then if you see anything that has the CCOF, does that show up? California certified organic farmers label, then we'd say that's a level above and beyond um, organic because California has a little bit stricter standards when it comes to managing some of these things. All right, so we're going to go inside and we're going to talk about each department individually. See y'all in there. All right, now for those of you who have our shopping guide, our shopping guide and reading labels guide, then we're going to cover that here for a moment. And if you don't have that, then contact us and we can get you a PDF copy of it. All right, so first of all, um, we're all about full fat. And so if you see anything that says reduced fat or reduced calorie, those are things that we're trying to avoid because that typically means it's been manipulated in some way and some things added back to it that we're not looking for. Um, if you see nutrition claims on the front of packaging, um, for instance, sometimes you'll see a popcorn bag that has something like popcorn, sea salt, pepper, and olive oil. And on the front, you would think that maybe that's the only ingredients in the bag. But then if you turn around and look at the fine print on the ingredients, you'd see that there's possibly a lot of other stuff. So understand that the front of packaging is always the marketing. It's always the sales pitch. And you always need to do your diligence and go back and turn around and look at the ingredients on the back of the packaging. Okay? Um, if you see uh, claims such as 100% real beef or made with 100% real juice or 100% olive oil, um, unfortunately, that doesn't mean that that product is 100% beef or 100% olive oil. It means that one of the ingredients is 100% beef and olive oil. And that means that you still need to read the ingredients and read the fine print because sometimes those things can be mixed with other things. So it's a little play on terms. Made with 100% real beef does not mean the whole thing is 100% real beef. It means one of the ingredients is 100% real beef. 
Um, and then a couple of things to be aware of. We have what we call our deal breakers. And our deal breakers are going to be the toxic fats and oils and then also artificial sweeteners. Now in Whole Foods, you don't have to worry about the artificial sweeteners piece, but they do have things that have some toxic oils that are toxic to us that they don't see a problem with, like things like soybean oil. Okay. Um, remember our guidelines of sugar. So four grams of sugar equals a teaspoon. Make sure that when you're reading labels, you're looking at the sugar content so that you're aware of how much sugar you're consuming. And then um, things that might be allowed in an otherwise acceptable product would be things like soy lecithin. Even though we're not fans of soy, soy lecithin is an emulsifier we don't see being problematic. Um, also things like carrageenan, guar gum, xanthan gum, and locust gum as stabilizers. You're going to see that in most canned coconut milks and canned goods. And those are also acceptable. Maybe not optimal, all things being equal. If you had two products that looked identical and one had guar gum and one didn't, obviously the thing with minimal ingredients is going to be better. But those are some things that we don't see being problems. Also magnesium stearate, citric acid, and we have a couple of other things that we'll put out in a blog post about this. All right? Cool. All right, so let's talk about the produce department. And this is the sheet that we'll be covering right now. So one thing I love about Whole Foods Produce Department, hmm? okay. One thing I love about Whole Foods Produce Department is that they try to be as local as they can. In Vegas, you know, we don't have a lot of growers and producers, so they source most of their produce from California, which is relatively fresh. Um, some things they'll, they'll source from some other places, but most of what we get is from Southern California, which is a great thing. It's kind of supporting relatively local business, as local as we can get. Um, also, the staff in the produce department is extremely knowledgeable. So if you've ever gone up to an 18-year-old kid at Walmart and asked them about how to pick a ripe melon or something, most of them are not going to have that knowledge. But here in Whole Foods, it's their job to be experts at this information. So if you ask any of the people in the produce department a question about pe picking something right, what's in season, how to cook something or prepare something, then they're going to be able to support you with that information. And they also have what I love, uh, they call it a try it before you buy it policy, which means that if you experience maybe a fruit maybe a fruit or a vegetable that is um, that's something you've never experienced before then they'll let you taste it before you buy it and if you like it of course you can buy it at a discount all right um, all right some some strategies when purchasing produce in Whole Foods they have what they call their good better best system it's responsibly grown and so they have their own quality rating system and what I love about their quality rating system is that it takes into account a lot of things that other labels don't take into account so they take into account worker welfare bee pollination water conservation and soil health and things like that so if you see the good better best symbol on any of their produce we would say that that's actually a step above organic even if it doesn't have the organic label and of course the organic label is extremely beneficial as well in on this right here. All right, so we're going to talk about how to strategize your um, organic and non-organic purchases. So a lot of people are wondering, do I have to buy organic all the time? And when it comes to produce, no, you don't. Like typically, I'm going to buy organic if it's available, but I'm also going to go off of our little sheet here called the Dirty Mothers and the Clean 18. So this is some information pulled from a website called EWG ewg.org and they provide you with a list every year of the uh, produce that's been tested heaviest for pesticides and herbicides and they test the most popular produce out there so if it makes this dirty love that kind of stuff if they are on the dirty list that means that they have been tested to be the dirtiest produce on the planet and that means that if you want something on that dirty list you need to make sure that you buy organic so if we can look at this dirty list right here can you see the strawberries so we'll see here that the number one dirtiest produce on the planet as of 2016 was strawberries and apples. And that means that if I want strawberries or I want apples, then I need to make sure that I buy organic or if there's not an organic option, I'm just not going to get that produce. And on the contrast, if we look at the clean 18, you'll see avocados, sweet corn, pineapple, cabbage, those are relatively clean. So that means they've been tested for the lowest herbicides and pesticides, which means that if I come in here and there's a conventional avocado, which you'll see that all the time. So for instance, right here, grown in Mexico, Haas avocados for $1.49 each. That's a pretty good deal. Not organic, but it's perfectly fine because they're tested to be extremely clean. So I don't have a problem getting conventional avocados or anything else on that clean list. All right. All right. And a couple of other things, you know, I hate to have clients or people that are going through the progression go out and spend $300 on 
um, you know, produce and then everything go bad in three to five days. So what we recommend is when you're buying fresh produce, use the ingredients for the Bobar salad. That's why the Bobar is created because it's very hearty and it keeps very well. And then also think, you know, you want to get things that keep well in the fridge. So things like cabbage and carrots and onions and cauliflower. Um, the leafy things tend to get really soggy really quick. And so we recommend getting the really hearty stuff fresh and then the other stuff frozen. All right, so we do recommend getting greens as part of your overall plant matter mix and cycling through things like spinach and kale and arugula and fl fresh greens. So the only caveat to getting those hardy things is I will keep a box of pre-washed greens or spinach or something in the fridge and usually have a little bit of greens most evenings. And so here we have triple washed spring mix, spinach, kale, arugula, and those are perfectly acceptable and things that people typically go through pretty fast. All right, also make sure that you take advantage of all the safe starches. So things like potatoes, sweet potatoes and yams, any potato variety. I mean, we mentioned in our uh, five food groups, we specifically call them white potatoes. And what that means is basically a species of plant. Um, but that includes russet potatoes, Idaho potatoes, Yukon potatoes, and all those. So definitely take advantage of the squashes and the potatoes and the yams because remember we're not low carbers, we're strategic carbers and we do go through a phase where we pull out the safe starches. So make sure you're taking advantage of those things. I always like to point out one of my favorite yams is going to be The Japanese yams, which are white fleshed, purple on the outside, and if you bake these in the oven or use them as some hash browns or something like that, these things are phenomenal. Like They're so great, they don't taste like normal sweet potatoes. How do I look? Ready? Okay, so um, the bin section. So every store is going to be set up just a little bit different, but the bin section is great. Um, some things to point out here, fresh grind almond butter. So we recommend transitioning from peanut butter. We would consider peanut butter gray airish. We love hard shelled nut butters, and almond butter is probably one of the most acceptable, most affordable for most people. If you look at almond butters in the almond butter section in the jars, usually it has some sugar and oils added to it. But we come here and we see this one's empty right now, but they'll have it filled up later today fresh grind almond butter which means that you can come over here and take one of their cups and push this button and it just grinds almonds into butter right there on the spot and that's the only ingredient so that's a really great pick right there and then as we go through the bin section you know enough information to make some smart choices obviously all the hard shell nuts are going to be great make sure you read the ingredients and make sure they're not roasted in some kind of toxic oil one of our deal breakers um, you know, things like coconut flakes, coconut chips, dried fruits, great, uh, pumpkin seeds, um, again, any of the hard shell nuts that we see here, we recommend people stay away from trail mixes because they have so much other stuff in it. Um, things like prunes and dates and figs are great. All right, so um, remember we love white rice, white rice over brown rice. We learn more about details about why we choose that, but um, any of the white rices in the bins are going to be great. Basmati, sushi, risotto. Um, Arborio, you know, jasmine, those are all great. Um, we prefer for people to get rice and legumes, such as lentils and beans, from the bin section because the bin section tends to be a lot fresher versus getting bags of rice and bags of beans. Those typically st uh, stay in warehouses for an extended period of time. These bins are constantly being replenished and used, so we recommend getting your rices and beans and legumes from the bin section. Go ahead. Okay. Some, uh, some picks in here. Uh, first of all, canned coconut milk. Uh, we love canned coconut milk. It's got a lot of fat in it, a lot of MCTs. We'd stay away from the carton coconut milk. There's always some great options in Whole Foods. Um, their Whole Foods brand 365 is a great quality brand. It's their value brand, so it's going to be the most inexpensive. Usually $2 for a can. Great buy. And then also we have some things that you can find other places like the Thai kitchen. Just make sure that you're always getting the full fat versions of those things. All right. And then we have some pasta options that you'll see. Maybe we'll point out a few others in here. Um, so remember, we're looking for things like white rice and white rice pasta. So there are some options. So we see here we've got a white rice pasta option. We've had some really good reviews from that. So um, And different stores are going to diff have different brands available. We would recommend staying away from the lentil pasta and the quinoa pastas because they haven't been prepared properly. Probably a better option than wheat-based pasta, but what would be optimal would be white rice pastas. So let's talk a little bit about some oils. We love coconut oil. Remember our top two fats are butter and coconut oil. 
Um, there's a lot of places that you can source your coconut oil. If you're here in Whole Foods, what we're looking for is virgin cold pressed. And one of our famous favorite brands is going to be Nutiva. So Nutiva has a lot of different sizes of options for cold pressed virgin organic coconut oil. So that would be your best buy as far as cost goes and it's a super high quality version of it. Um, most of the other oils, you know, we're not going to mess with. Yes, you can get macadamia nut oil and avocado oil, but I don't really know how or where you'd use that because we have things like olive oil. But those would be some things you could look at. Um, for olive oil, uh, we want to recommend purchasing specific brands because there's a, a great website called truthinoliveoil.com where some guys went out and actually tested uh, various olive oil brands for purity. And what they found was not olive oils were actually 100% olive oil. They were usually blended or combined with other oils like soybean oil. And so some of the things that have been tested as pure are most of the things that come from California. So our top two picks for olive oil are going to be California Olive Ranch. Can you see that on there? Okay. So California Olive Ranch from California, great stuff, a super good value buy. And then also in Whole Foods, the Whole Foods, where are we at? Oh. The Whole Foods 365 brand from California. Okay, so they're going to have different brands that come from Spain and Portugal and other places, but the one that's from California has actually been tested as 100% uh, pure. All right, so vinegars, balsamic vinegar, wine vinegars, uh, rice vinegars, um, those are all acceptable and great. We always recommend that every household have some Bragg's apple cider organic vinegar to use to make bobar and all kinds of other different uses. And then if we come over here to the sauces, just some top picks to look at here. Um, we love Sriracha sauce. A really good brand is going to be the Sky Valley version. And then also, what's up? <laughs> oh, is it Sriracha? All right. So, and then also we like this Ninja Squirrel. That's a really good brand. Um, if you're looking for an alternative to soy sauce, so we don't recommend Bragg's Aminos because that's soy based, and we don't recommend soy sauce because it's soy based. But what we do love is this uh, coconut aminos and it tastes like soy sauce but it's actually a little bit better I mean most of us once we use it we like it a lot <laughs> so, <laughs> Nicole's laughing behind the camera making me self-conscious now um, All right, so obviously uh, fresh is typically going to be better but also to make this work in a modern lifestyle we're fine with can some canned goods so if you need some canned tomatoes stewed tomatoes all those are great options just make sure that you read the ingredients and we don't have any of our deal breaker toxic oils in them um, if you're looking for marinara sauce, pizza sauce, things like that, um, those are really easy to make. There's a lot of uh, simple, fresh, online recipes for that. But then also some of the canned and jarred ones are going to be fine. Just make sure that you read the ingredients. For instance, this creamy vodka from Whole Foods is going to have soybean oil in it. So that would be a deal breaker. But then another version of Whole Foods, like their regular marinara, typically is made with olive oil so that would be completely acceptable so canned jarred marinara sauces and things are fine just make sure that you're reading the ingredients on it okay so let's talk about the meat department one of our favorite departments in here so one great thing about the meat department is their step rating system and you'll see this up here a one through five and that's their quality rating system for their meat department and the great thing about Whole Foods is that anything that makes it in Whole Foods at a minimum meets their step level one criteria, which means that there's certain quality standards associated with the way they treat animals and everything is hormone antibiotic free. So a lot of people call Whole Foods whole paycheck because they come in and they break the bank, but that's because most of the time they're buying organic and grass fed and the highest quality versions of all these different things. And what we recommend is just focus on switching to real food if you come into Whole Foods and you get, for instance, their cheapest ground beef or their cheapest pork chops or their cheapest chicken, it's still a level of quality that's better and higher than you're going to find in Walmarts and Vons and places like that. So when you come into Whole Foods, just look for what's on sale, look for what fits your budget, and then base your purchasing decisions off of that. Um, we're fine with all the sausages, all the different ingredients in the sausages. So we love the sausages that are made here in-house. Um, typically, it's a really good buy because they're usually $4.99 to $6.99 a pound versus some things that are like $10.99 a pound. And remember, sausage, pork sausage is loaded with healthy meats, healthy fats, and all kinds of things ground up. Um, and then also... Um, 
any of the bacon flavors are going to be fine. So every Whole Foods is going to have different flavors of bacon that they've cured with different things, and they all check out as far as we're concerned. You will see some pre-made burger patties and some pre-made chicken options. Just make sure that if they're breaded or they have you know any kind of flouring or something on it that you read the ingredients and those things check out because sometimes they will use almond flour or coconut flour. What's up? What are you laughing at? Okay, now with the seafood department, I think all of us could do a better job at eating more seafood, but just understand that seafood in general is going to be extremely nutrient dense, especially shellfish. So things like shrimp, oysters, scallops, what else, crab? Love oysters, okay? So, um, you know, typically we would not recommend getting farm raised, we'd recommend getting wild caught uh, seafood. Whole Foods Farm Raised Program is a, is a really top-notch, high-quality program. So if you come in here and there's some sam salmon options that are um, farm-raised, then I think those are a pretty decent option. The things to look out for would be uh, anything made from China or brought in from China. You'd probably want to avoid those things. All right, so the frozen section, we love frozen produce as a complement to eating some fresh produce. A lot of people get questions or have questions about whether uh, fresh or frozen is better. And to be honest, we think it's a wash because fresh produce is typically picked, it's stored in a warehouse and then it's shipped and then stored again. So you lose some nutritional value and some freshness there. Frozen produce is typically uh, picked at the peak of ripeness and then flash frozen or maybe blanched and flash frozen. And so it's still extremely nutrient dense. So we recommend having a mix of both. For convenience and making this work in a modern world, um, we recommend having a lot of produce that's frozen in the freezer that you can just pull out and throw into a skillet, cook it in some butter, coconut oil, put a lid on it, and you got some uh, cooked vegetables or steamed vegetables in about 15 minutes. Um, so just make sure if you're doing any of the blends that you look for the things we want to avoid because there are some blends that have soybeans in it. Uh, my favorite buys and most cost effective are going to be the bags of cauliflower, frozen cauliflower, the bags of frozen broccoli florets, and then we also love the California blend which has, you know, carrots and some cauliflower and some other things mixed into it. All right, now belie believe it or not, ice cream is in the deal. All right, in moderation, I'd, I'd say it's dangerous to keep in the house because most of us have a hard time eating just a little bit of it. But if you have that kind of self-control and you can moderate how much you eat, then ice cream is going to be in the deal. So our favorite ice cream is going to be from a uh, creamery out in California called Strauss. And all of Strauss's different flavors check out. So that would be the best dairy option. Although there are other options, you can read the ingredients and check them out, but they're probably going to be a little bit more expensive. So Strauss is our top pick. You know enough to read ingredients and make good choices. Um, and then also, if you have dairy issues or if you're going through one of our non-dairy phases, then our top pick for a non-dairy ice cream is going to be Coconut Bliss. And so far, all the different flavor options have checked out, but I would still make sure that you read the ingredients and make sure those things check out. So again, for ice cream, our top pick for dairy is going to be Strauss. Our top pick for non-dairy is going to be the Coconut Bliss option. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about sweeteners. Um, stevia is a great no calorie sweetener option. All right, so you can use it any time of day. Um, a lot of people like stevia, a lot of people think it tastes like artificial sweeteners. So, you know, maybe it's something you can experiment with unless you know that you already like it. What we're looking for with stevia is going to be something that is stevia leaf or extract. We're we prefer not to have the bleached or processed ones, so we stay away from Truvia, and there are some dripper options, some drop options, um, and then some powdered versions that are just stevia leaf and extract, and those would be good options. Read the label, read the ingredients, do the best you can with it. Um, we're looking to avoid dextrose. If you see something like inulin or silicon, that's perfectly fine. Um, any other ingredients are probably questionable or suspect. If you have any questions, you can uh, send us a message or post it in one of our different social media outlets. So sugar is an option. If you need to have uh, make any recipe that requires sugar, you can use organic cane sugar. We wouldn't say that coconut sugar is going to be any better than cane sugar. I mean, sugar is sugar for the most part. The body's still going to process it the same way. So if you're looking, if you have a recipe that requires granulated sugar, the uh, organic cane sugar option is going to be great. You'll see here we have things like cocoa powder. If that's the only ingredient, that's perfectly fine to use here and there. Um, dark chocolate chips for certain recipes and certain desserts is going to be perfectly fine. Um, we have some organic chocolate chips that are bittersweet, um, some that are a little bit sweeter, so you need to be careful with the, the amounts that you use there. Um, sometimes there is a brand or version. And then our top 
sweetener that we recommend using in every situation possible is going to be honey. Um, ideally, you're going to get it raw, local, unfiltered honey. Um, here in Las Vegas, I think one of the most notable ones is going to be Pahrump honey, but there are some other options that you'll see in the store at farmers markets and things like that. So depending on where you are, always look to source raw, unfiltered, unheated local honey so that you get the benefits of the pollen and, and support the local businesses and things. Another option for sweeteners is going to be maple syrup. So um, if possible, if you have the options, we're looking for grade B maple syrup. It's going to have a little bit more nutrient content, a little less processed. So sometimes like here, we'll see grade A and grade B. Um, and so grade B is going to be a little bit more nutritious, even though it's still pretty sweet. One last thing on the sweeteners, we would stay away from agave nectar, even though you know we hear that it's low on the glycemic index, it's highly processed, it's got a lot of fructose in it. Again, our top picks for sweeteners is going to be honey, um, maple syrup, and some, if you need to, organic cane sugar. Hard shelled nuts, uh, nut butters. Um, so there's a lot of almond butter options. We think the best option is probably going to be to do your own fresh grind, like we saw over there earlier. Um, but there are some other options here that you can check out, read the ingredients, look for the toxic oils, look for added sugar. If it has added sugar, that's not necessarily a problem. You just need to be aware that there's some additional sugar in it. Um, and then other hard shell nut butters like macadamia nut butter, you'll see some options here. Super expensive, but it's something you can experiment with. But one of our favorite picks is going to be uh, this sun butter. So sun butter is sunflower seed butter. Um, and we've had it tested with a lot of practitioners that we work with to be extremely tolerable even by people that don't tolerate things like peanut butter. So that would be the peanut butter alternative and it tastes great. Alright, so believe it or not, hot dogs are in the deal because hot dogs, even though they get a bad rap, they contain a lot of the things that we're looking for. So a lot of the scraps and skins and connective tissues and things. And if you get it from a quality company, then you're getting some quality nutrients. So our top pick for hot dogs is going to be this company called Fork in the Road, which uses pasture-raised pork and pasture-raised beef. Um, and they have different flavor options. Just make sure that you read the ingredients on the flavor options. But these plain hot dogs are just absolutely amazing. There's some other hot dog options in here that are great. Um, you can get the packaged bacon if you want to. We like getting the bacon that's behind the, um, the glass case in the fresh butcher shop. Um, and I think that's it. For the okay, so condiments are in the deal, believe it or not. Um, things like yellow mustard are great. So my top pick for yellow mustard is going to be this Whole Foods brand organic. You can also get French's mustard. The ingredients check out. Make sure that you read the ingredients yourself, though. Don't take my word for it. Um, also, believe it or not, we have some mayonnaises that are in the deal. And do we see those? So for mayonnaises, there are some options out there. Our favorite pick is going to be Primal Kitchen's mayo. And here you see Primal Kitchen Chipotle Lime Mayo, but they also have just a regular mayo. It's made with avocado oil, and it tastes just like mayonnaise. It is mayonnaise. Like, it's great. It's amazing. Um, yep. Over here we have things like ketchup. So believe it or not, ketchup's in the deal. And if I look at the Whole Foods ketchup here, even the non-organic one is a pretty decent buy. So if I look at the ingredients, tomato puree, um, organic cane sugar, organic vinegar, salt, onion, clove, allspice, and red pepper. So it completely checks out. If I look at the sugar content on it, five grams of sugar per tablespoon. So that would be almost a couple teaspoons of sugar. So, or no, one teaspoon of sugar. So. Um, so just be aware of the sugar content. You probably wouldn't want to have ketchup with your eggs in the morning, but ketchup in the evening with some steak or roast or something like that would be perfectly appropriate. All right, and then uh, barbecue sauces. There's several different options out there. Our favorite that we've always been promoting is going to be the bone-sucking barbecue sauce, which has a regular and a spicy option. All right, so hot sauces are in the deal. Cholula, Tabasco are great. We love JoJo's. Um, I'm not sure if they sell JoJo's here or not. I love JoJo's. I've got JoJo's in the house. So just make sure that you read the ingredients and look for our deal breakers. Um, and then also for salad dressings, we recommend that you make your own salad dressing using the recipe that's in the guide. Um, you know, just a mason jar and shake it up with some olive oil, some vinegar of your choice, maybe some mustard or honey for a, an emulsifier, maybe an egg yolk or something like that. Um, there are some options in here. Most of them don't taste that great because most of them, if they have oil, are going to have the oils that we're trying to avoid. And if they don't have oil, they don't taste that great. Um, but a really good buy is going to be, again, we see here Primal Kitchen. And they have a couple of different flavor options. So they have a Greek vinaigrette, and they also have a honey mustard, maybe a couple other ones. So that's made with avocado oil, and that's a really, really good pick. Spice. Oh. 
spices and seasonings are in the deal for sure. Just make sure that if you're purchasing or looking at a blend, like a barbecue dry rub blend or something, that you read the ingredients and all the ingredients check out. But obviously, the herbs and spices and things are going to be great. Um, we recommend that you replace your home Morton salt, table salt, with some Himalayan salt or some Celtic salt or even some of this real salt that we have down here. And so the real salt and the Celtic salt and the Himalayan salt is going to be intact with beneficial nutrients. Salt's not a problem. Salt doesn't cause high blood pressure. And especially if you're using these better quality versions, you're getting some beneficial nutrients with it. All right. So we also recommend when possible, um, if you like this kind of stuff, getting things like whole animals. And a great way to do that is to get sardines in the diet or canned oysters. And so there's several different options here that we love. My favorite is going to be the Wild Planet sardines. The ones cooked, uh, that are roasted in um, olive oil with a little bit of lemon are amazing. They have a marinara one that's great. Um, and just understand that when you're eating sardines and things like oysters, you're getting shell shellfish, which is extremely nutrient dense. You're getting the whole animal. You're getting a lot of uh, vitamins and minerals. And they're just uh, really, gr really great snacks and things to eat when you want to. All right, so one of our quests is going to be sourcing water, and we'll give you a couple of different options there. But just when buying water, understand what we're looking for is clean water. We're not, we don't really care about alkalinity. So I think alkalinity is a, um, what do you call that? I hate to say it like a scam or something like that, really, because alkalinity changes throughout the body. And so drinking something that's alkaline in an effort to change some alkalinity or acidity in the body is, is just not something that's going to happen. But what we do want with water is clean and pure. And so what we're looking for is reverse osmosis, carbon filtrated, and if you see an additional ozonated, that's really a beneficial thing. Um, typically, if you see spring water, spring water is going to be tap water. Tap water is crap water, so we'd stay away from spring water. Um, but then things that say purified drinking water or drinking water are typically going to be reverse osmosis, carbon filtrated. Make sure you turn the uh, packaging around. You read the fine print sh because it should say that somewhere. Here in Vegas, you know, we got a company called Real Water. They are alkaline water, but they're also reverse osmosis. I think it's almost like a 13-step filtration process that it goes through. So remember, when sourcing water, you want clean water. We don't care about alkaline water, although some clean water may also just by chance be alkaline. All right, so um, a lot of people ask questions about what else can I drink besides water. Well, for your main hydration goals, we'd say water is the only thing. But to mix things up a little bit, you can always throw sparkling water in the mix. So one of our favorite brands is going to be LaCroix and all the different flavor options. So they are reverse osmosis carbon filtrated water with some uh, essential oil type extracts added to it for flavoring. So that's acceptable. I wouldn't get most of your hydration from that, but that would be something to change things up a little bit. And then also we love things like the Mountain Valley sparkling water and uh, Pellegrino is my top pick for sparkling water. Super high quality stuff. Uh, the places that it's sourced is great. Um, Perrier is also okay. I think it's owned by Pepsi, so maybe not big fans because of that, but it's still a fine option. Um, we'd stay away from the Whole Foods version of the sparkling water just because, you know, the test results that we got from it weren't that great. So. All right, so we love coffee. Um, we love teas. Um, I would recommend, when possible, getting organic coffee because of some of the aflatoxins and things. Not mandatory, but coffee is going to be great. Um, your best buy in Whole Foods is going to be um, their, uh, what they call their Allegro brand, which is basically their brand. So it's really cost effective, but there's a lot of other options. I love this Groundwork brand, um, and I also lo love the, uh, the Marley coffees. Those are great. So um, for teas... Most teas are going to check out. I haven't really come across any tea that didn't check out. Um, so if you like black tea or peppermint tea or green teas and things like that, those are great options. All right, so we love cheeses. We love full-fat cheeses. If you tolerate cheese, then we'd say take advantage of any and all cheeses. So cheddars, breeze, blue cheeses, whatever floats your boat, they're all going to have different nutritional profiles and different benefits. Um, same thing as with the meat department. The cheeses in Whole Foods all have to meet minimal quality standards, so they're all hormone antibiotic free. Um, just make sure that you get the full fat versions of everything. They do have some uh, grass fed options that are very affordable. So remember, grass fed is going to be a little bit better quality. It's going to give you a little bit better nutrient profile. Um, so make sure that you take advantage of the cheeses. All right, so in the chips and snacks section, you will find some things that are approved. Remember, again, we're looking for toxic fats and oils. Um, these pork rinds here from Epic. $3.99 for a bag like that's a really good buy and it's just pork skin fried in its own fat absolutely delicious and like just a really really great snack and a great buy 
have a couple different flavors there. And then um, if you want to make your own popcorn, we're not fans of corn in general for the most part, but if you find something that's organic, non-GMO, and you, you want to make your own popcorn for movie night and cook it in your own coconut oil, that would be perfectly appropriate here and there. So we have a couple of different organic varieties. My favorite is going to be this heirloom organic right here. Um, love it. So that is an option here and there. I just wouldn't get carried away with it. All right, so in your shopping guide, you should have some information about quality and eggs. Um, when it comes to eggs, we don't really care about cage-free or free-range simply because the, um, the label definitions don't mean what we think it means. So what we're looking for when it comes to eggs is, uh, and what I mean by that is I'm not going to pay extra for cage-free or free-range. There's nothing wrong with eating a cage-free or free-range egg. There's nothing wrong with eating conventional eggs. But if you're going to try to focus your efforts on buying something a little bit better quality, we'd say the next step up would be from conventional would be organic eggs because at least the chickens were fed organic feed. And then the next step up from that would be pasture-raised, not to be confused with pasture Rised, pasture raised where they're out in a pasture eating bugs and grubs and things like that. So most people don't understand that chickens are omnivores. They eat meat, they eat insects and bugs and grubs. They even eat other dead chickens sometimes and rats and things. They're like little dinosaurs. So if they eat their natural diet, they're going to have a much better nutrient content for their eggs. And so um, the best eggs is going to be pasture raised because then the chicken is actually out and allowed to eat those different things. So um, usually the best buy as far as organic in here is going to be the whole, uh, whole Foods Organic 365, these brown ones. Um, personally, when I eat eggs and egg yolks, I'm always going to go with this Vital Farms brand. And that is a pasture raised version out of Austin, Texas. The Vital Farms is going to have a few different levels and options. Here we see one that doesn't have any non-GMO or organic labels, so it's just regular pasture-raised eggs. Here we see an organic pasture-raised egg, so I typically go with the cheaper versions. Um, I would not pay extra for veg-fed because, remember, chickens are omnivorous, so they're not supposed to be veg-fed, so I wouldn't pay extra for a veg-fed egg. not saying I wouldn't eat it, but I wouldn't pay extra for it. Uh, it's cold. All right, ready? All right, so um, we love full-fat yogurt. We'd stay away from the flavored versions. Um, full-fat plain, full-fat Greek. Um, our favorite top pick, again, we see Strauss, that creamery out of California. So this plain Greek yogurt, full-fat, it's great. They have a plain, full-fat, just regular version as well. I'm also a huge fan of the Wallaby full-fat. Let's see. Low-fat. Like this one right here. Wallaby Organic Greek Whole Milk Plain Yogurt, just amazing. Um, I'd stay away from the flavored options because the flavored options typically have a ton of sugar in them. If you look at it, usually a cup is going to have about 25 to 35 grams of sugar, which is insane. So if you want to eat some yogurt and add some honey to it or a little maple syrup or maybe your own fresh cut fruit or frozen fruit, then that would be perfectly appropriate. All right, our beloved butter. All of you should be going through butter like it's going out of style. Like butter is great. So remember, any kind of butter is going to be fine. Um, I think the most popular in the kind of holistic nutrition realm is going to be Kerrygold. So Kerrygold is a grass-fed Irish butter, um, really good nutrient content, usually uh, very affordable. Uh, make sure that you do not go with the reduced fat version. You want the real version. Um, other things like cream cheeses and sour cream is going to be perfectly fine. Um, here we see the Strauss again, Strauss full fat sour cream. Um, then Organic Valley has one as well. Just make sure that you're getting the full fat versions of everything. Um, if you see cream cheeses, sour creams, and things like that, those are perfectly appropriate as well. All right, so heavy cream. Most of us absolutely adore heavy cream. Oh, yeah, that's one of my favorite brands right there. So um, remember, we prefer heavy cream over half and half, heavy cream over milk. So any situation where you might use half and half or milk, you'd want to use heavy cream instead. Remember, heavy cream is the fat version of milk. It's where all the beneficial nutrients are. It's where the healthy fats are that we're using to train our body to use fat for fuel. Um, so heavy cream in your coffee, heavy cream... I don't know, in recipes is soups and sauces. Sometimes I'll put some cream with cheese in some of my vegetable mixes and make like au gratins and stuff. Um, so there's a lot of different options up here. You know, a lot of us will go with Organic Valley. Clover's a great one. Um, Horizon has a good one. Um, you know, sometimes you'll see terms like ultra pasteurized versus pasteurized. Pasteurized is going to be less processed, but at the same time, if you're just using a little bit of it in your coffee or something on a daily basis, I don't see that being extremely problematic. So heavy cream over half and half in milk all the time. A lot of great options here. All right, so alcohol is in the deal. Um, you know, we'd stay away from things like beer because of the wheat. 
but wines, dry wines, sweet wines are all perfectly appropriate. If you're having a drink or two at night in the evenings, unless it's a problem for you, we'd say that's perfectly acceptable and appropriate. Um, what's great about Whole Foods is they will have a selection of what they call eco-friendly wines, which are typically made from organic grapes and sourced from some good quality sources. Um, and a lot of them are $10 or less per bottle, which I absolutely love. Um, so wines are an option. Some Whole Foods and some stores are going to find liquors, and we're fine with most of the grain liquors, even though technically they're made from grain. Um, so things like vodkas and whiskeys and scotches and, and things like that are going to be perfectly fine and appropriate in moderation. All right, so a great option for on the go is going to be rotisserie chickens. At Whole Foods, they typically have a couple of different levels. You'll see a non-GMO rotisserie chicken and an organic. Organics can be a little bit more expensive, but remember the non-GMO, really good quality, hormone antibiotic free. So if you're in a pinch and you don't have anything made for dinner, you're looking for something easy for the weekend, rotisserie chickens are great. Some Whole Foods are going to have cooker and smoker sections where they'll actually cook and smoke and prepare food for you. Um, and you'll see a lot of different options laid out like wings and tri-tip and brisket and things. We don't have one here, but some of the other locations here locally they do. Um, what's great about those places that have the smokers and the ovens and the grills is you can call ahead of time and have them cook a steak for you. You can have them cook a whole chicken, a whole turkey. If you're looking to prepare food for a family or some people coming in for the weekend or something, that would be a really good option to take advantage of their food prep service. Um, as far as I understand, they don't charge extra for it, but they just don't advertise for it either. So you need to ask about it if that Whole Foods has that option available for, for you. So here again, we see some things like some cheeses, some shredded cheeses, um, deli meats are perfectly fine, pepperoni, um, prosciutto, salami, those are all great options. You know, you definitely want to get a mix of fresh meats and chickens and meat and sausages and pork and beef and stuff that you cook on your own. But then deli meats are perfectly fine and appropriate as snacks or, or using however you might want to use them. Um, remember, we love full fat cheese, so getting some shredded cheese options would be great for your omelets and other recipes and things. So in Whole Foods, you'll see a lot of prepared foods. You'll see some things in what looks like a salad bar, and then you'll also have the prepared foods which are behind the glass casing back here. So you just need to be careful, read the ingredients, and if the ingredients aren't shown, you have to ask questions. So we'll see some different things here. For instance, this roasted cauliflower, it looks great, but when you read the fine print, it's they use expeller press canola oil, so that would be a deal breaker for us. But right next to it, we have Brussels sprouts that are cooked in olive oil. So that's perfectly fine and appropriate. So just make sure that you're reading ingredients and asking questions. The prepared foods behind the glass counters, same thing. If they don't have the detail, you'll need to ask questions just to make sure we don't have any of the deal breakers in there. All right, so salad bar has a lot of great options. Obviously, fresh produce. You have hard-boiled eggs. You have shredded chicken. You know, if there's an ingredient list, make sure that you're reading it. Um, use the real 100% olive oil and vinegars to season it. So that would be a great option. All right, if you're here local, we do a fermentation class where we teach you how to make kombucha and kimchi and sauerkraut. Uh, but also you can get kombucha at the store here. And kombucha is a fermented tea. It's a health drink. It's great. Um, be careful of the ones that have a lot of sugar in it. So um, if you read the back of the labels on some of these things, we love GTs. This is just one brand that we love. And if I look on the back of it, I'd see two grams of sugar per serving, two servings in a bottle. So this has four grams of sugar. That's about the lowest sugar content you're going to find with kombucha. But kombucha is going to be a great option. Um, also, we have over here some cold brewed coffees, and we love cold brewed coffee. Just make sure that the cold brewed coffee doesn't have any sweeteners or added things in it. All right, so we love dark chocolate. Chocolate's great. If you got a problem with it, maybe be careful with it, but um, there's a lot of chocolate options in here, some things to look for, sugar content, and then also you may see soy lecithin as an emulsifier in some chocolates. Not all chocolates. If you do, that's perfectly fine and appropriate. A really good buy is going to be... Um, the Whole Foods dark chocolate versions, they have a coconut, they have an almond, they have a, a just a plain dark chocolate. A um, little bit higher in the sugar content. A little bit higher in the sugar content, but just be aware of it and moderate how much you're going to consume of it. Um, uh, we would always opt for dark chocolate over milk chocolate because milk chocolate is going to have a lot of the milk solids that tend to be problematic for people. The dark chocolate options are going to be much more tolerable. So look for the dark chocolate options. And then typically a lot of the different chocolate options in here are going to be uh, are going to check out fine. So we love the green and black versions, same with the dark chocolate, and then also the endangered species. But there's also other options here that are great. All right, so... Um, 
We recommend and prefer that you get most of your food from real food that's home cooked and fresh. Um, we're not big fans of protein bars or bars in general, um, but there are some bars that would check out if you read the ingredients. So one of the most famous is going to be Laura Bars. Super simple list of ingredients. Usually it's got some dates and figs and almonds and things like that. And again, um, you need to have this idea, concept of moving away from packaged and processed items. So we'd say it's not optimal, but in a pinch, if you needed like a Laura bar or something like that, read the ingredients, make sure they check out, check out the sugar content and be aware of it. Um, there are a couple of other options here. And again, we prefer people to go with real food versus using these uh, packaged bars. But um, another great option is going to be the Epic bars. So Epic has uh, turkey, bacon, pork, and other beef jerky type bars. And those are really good options as well if you're in a pinch. So. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for joining us on that little virtual tour. Um, we know it was beneficial for you, but give us some feedback. Tell us if uh, you need some other information or something like that. And uh, we're always here to support you. Love you guys. Thanks.